So uh, I just want to introduce this video because it's it might seem a little redundant. And, and if you watched the building process of the um, banjo made out of tiger wood flooring, uh, this is just a compilation of all those videos. So I've just taken all the different parts of the different videos and put them into one. So for those who want to follow the process and see the whole thing. Um, so if, if you've seen it and you're, you're, you know, I'm just warning you ahead of time, it's kind of a re rerun. But uh, it's a good rerun and it ties things together. And at the very end of it, I'll, I'll show the, the finished product. Thank you. So uh, I'm experimenting with something. First of all, I have never tried to document the process of a build uh, before on an instrument. And so that's new, and I am going to experiment with hybriding a mountain banjo, uh, which isn't really that complicated. It's the same basic design. I'm just going to make the, the skin uh, an 11-inch uh, sound pad, a tone ring, instead of a 6-inch tone ring. Um, so it's just going to be bigger. And part of that is I have in my hand an old uh, Bakelite banjo rim that had gotten broken and so you can see it's broken and it's uh, Bakelite is basically a plastic of resin and uh, it's just not something I've had luck repairing and using and so I, I just figured out how to bypass it on a different banjo and made one out of plywood but it occurred to me that this would be ideal for a tone ring inside a mountain banjo which makes it bigger and my theory is it will give it a deeper tone and I'll be making that out all out of hardwood and, and kind of showing the process as I go so first of all my first step is I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and remove this flange which is used to hold hooks for the tension uh, ring and to put tension on the skin and mountain banjo does it differently so all, essentially all this is is a tone ring that pushes against the skin so I think I can my theory is I can super glue the crack because it won't be under a lot of pressure and um, make it work that way we'll see to continue this build uh, that I'm doing. I, I've i made well over 20 different instruments. I've made guitars and the mandolin and um, dobro and lap steel, electric guitars as well as acoustic, uh, baritone, um, stand-up bass, all kinds of things and, and quite a few banjos and um, I have never ever tried to document the process before. Uh, Maybe it's because I never thought it'd work out. I don't know, but I just haven't. And so I thought I'd just, that's that's what I've been doing. Now, I've been a little busy and I chose to work with tiger wood, which is a, ultimately is a very, it will be a beautiful wood, um, but I don't recommend working with it as a general rule. And I knew that when I started that um, I've worked with it before. Um, I made a six string banjo and part of it is tiger wood and it's it's beautiful but tiger wood is real brittle and it cracks easily it doesn't like routers um, you know it, it saws well and it sands okay and and everything it's a little harder to shape that way it's got a lot of oils in it it seems like so it's a little harder to to glue it's called tiger wood because these beautiful stripes that it gets and um, they are beautiful and every one of those beautiful stripes is a weak point waiting to cause problems and so i knew that and you'll see this if it worked if it doesn't work you won't see this so what i've done i'm working on um it's a hybrid between a regular banjo and a, and a mountain banjo and uh you've seen my mountain banjo before i decided to make a bigger skin ring and it, as I mentioned, I started with this uh, Bakelite, uh, I think it was a Harmony product uh, back in the day. It's a banjo rim. 
and I cut the, the flange off that held the, to, the tension hooks so I can fit it through here to make tension. And so it will cause tension on a natural goat skin, much like a mountain banjo does. So what I've done in the process is I've glued my tiger wood together, cut out a circle shape for the front, and, and work glued the neck in here. And you'll see um, this steel rod that's not a tension rod. I've put tension rods in uh, other instruments. Uh, most recently it was a six string uh, banjo for someone else. And um, there's a splinter. So, uh, but but I went ahead and um, I chisel, I use a quarter inch chisel and I made this groove. And this is a stainless rod. And I just put it in for support and strength. That's all it is. And it'll get glued in under the fretboard. And then you'll see I glued my extra piece of wood on the back because I'll cut, uh, you know, a 15 degree angle into this um, to keep the strings to have good tension. So, so that's going to be the front. And then um, I just finished making a fretboard for it. And so uh, this is also tiger wood. <laughs> and so it's a 17 slot, uh, 17 fret fretboard that I made. Um, just slotted it by hand with, with my little hand saw for, for making fret slots. And I mark it with a square and just saw straight on the line. And that will go over the truss rod. So you see the truss rod. This will glue over it. That's how instruments are made. And it glues over the truss rod. And it'll give me a little bit of, not much, but a little bit of a scoop there. And um, once I get that all in place, um, I will have already cut out my 15 degree angle. And then I'll start shaping the neck. And now the other thing I've done is I got busy with some plywood and I, it's three different pieces of plywood and I laminated them together. They're in a circle. And the purpose of that, and none of this is sanded yet, it will be, is that it will glue on to the front of the banjo. And, and that just gives me the right depth for this ring. So you can see that this it's the perfect depth for the ring to push against the natural goat skin. And so that's what I'll be busy on very soon is sanding this. I'll get this all sanded smooth. Then I'll laminate it onto the banjo and then I'll sand this to, to meet it. Now what this is going to get, it's not just going to be ugly plywood. It's going to get some of this veneer on here. And the big question at this point that I am undecided on is will this veneer, uh, will I keep the veneer natural or will I stain it some sort of red mahogany or cherry? And uh, so natural kind of compares to the, the wood like that. And um, once it's sanded, it, this looks pretty light, but once it, as it gets sanded and lacquered, it, it changes. So... Um, that will that will come up against this so I'm working on that decision this isn't the, isn't actually the piece I'm going to use this is a scrap uh, because now my next uh, step will be to um, stain part of it and make a comparison of which I like best and um, everybody has their opinion about that uh, I tend to always go natural if I can um, but occasionally um, I'll stain something and part of it is I uh, I'm kind of opting for making the whole instrument darker and that's that's why I'm thinking in terms of a stain because I'm also actually going to attempt I've never done it but um, I saw a video where someone else did and I'm gonna stain the goat skin with a kind of a Danish oil um, walnut color to make it a little darker because they bleach those skins anyhow so then I want to stain it back and and kind of give it all a darker tone uh, just for kicks and giggles uh, so so that's where I'm at this far well hello so I'm continuing to document the process of this particular banjo build 
And one of the things I didn't mention before, one of the reasons I'm using the tiger wood is it was readily available. I, uh, I have a friend who is a mental illness. He's a wood hoarder. And it's my ministry to use up his wood. And so he actually had gotten a hold of a bunch of flooring. And so it was hardwood flooring that I've repurposed to make this instrument. And I hope it will help deliver my friend from his illness. But nonetheless, I'll take advantage of it and, and enjoy all his free wood. So in the process, things are going relatively well. I also realize the reason I don't generally want to document an instrument build is the commitment involved to, well, document the instrument build. And so that's what's going on. And if you're wondering, yes, it's dark out and it's 5.30 in the morning. Uh, that's, that's me. So here we are. <clears throat> So what I've done so far, you can see I've got the fretboard on. I've shaped the neck. Um, I, I wish I'd have done a time-lapse uh, video of me carving the neck. I didn't. But I carved it with a draw knife and a couple other knives, as I often do. And so I've shaped a headstock, and I've glued the fretboard on now. So you can see that, and it's over the truss rod that I had shown earlier. And um, I fastened the plywood. You can see the plywood. And I've, I've um, put the veneer on the outside. I have not yet stained it. Um, and then I've glued some blocks on here which are attached. And I'll shape that. Um, and uh, that's the process. And, and then I'll create a trim for here. And, and just try to make things pretty as I go. Um, obviously, this isn't the finished product. The uh, rim, as I showed before, fits nicely in there like that. So we're going to get a banjo out of this thing yet. And I made a back. As you'll recall, um, a back has to go on to this to push the banjo rim against the skin. Um, that's how the mountain banjo works. And so rather than using tension hooks. So um, tiger wood, I think the middle is, is a type of cherry. The tiger wood came uh, again from the flooring. I think this, this piece is from a dismantled organ. <laughs> and, and then I cut the Celtic cross into it just um, for aesthetics. And it goes on the back like this and it will fasten on and push on that rim so that the rim can fit in like that and then the natural goat skin will will go over it to, um, looking at it here I think boy it would almost been nice to put a clear skin on it which I did on the six string banjo but I'm, I'm opting for the sound I get out of the natural goat skin. So um, that's really how that works. So that's where we're going. And I did uh, play around with some stain. Uh, so here's the difference. I've, this is the natural uh, veneer. And this is stained with a red mahogany stain. And that kind of matches the tiger wood. I, I'm leaning this direction. And what I'll do next is I'll shellac these two samples to really compare them to, um, to what I want to do. But I kind of like that uh, against the tiger wood versus the natural because, as I said, I'm opting for a darker tone. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So that's where we're headed. And I hope you're enjoying this process. Uh, I enjoy building them. I'm not so sure how much fun it is documenting it, but I'm doing it nonetheless. I wanted to take a minute and show you where I'm at on the banjo build. Uh, just as a side note, uh, if you like working in your garage on wood and you haven't thought of this, um, this is a box fan, just your ordinary box fan that you buy cheap at the store. This one was old and worn out. Well, not really worn out, but old and not really fit for the window or what have you. And I taped a, um, 
20 by 20 furnace filter over it and I turn it on high and while I'm sanding it sucks the sawdust into that and of course I have the window open when I'm doing that and that tends to help. I also always wear a respirator and things like that. So where I'm at on the build, the first thing I'll show you is I made this walnut tailpiece. Now this just has grain sealer on it. It's not finished. Um, and, and that will go on the instrument here to hold the strings. And I've made tailpieces in the past and, and they work fine, although I have had one fail and, and crack. And it, of all things, it happened to be made out of tiger wood, hence the walnut. Um, it, I had it strung up and it was a nylon six string and I'm playing and it sounded great and I played for a couple days and all of a sudden wham bam and it cracked and strings went everywhere so it was it didn't cause any harm but it, it uh, sure boiled my potatoes so um, where I'm at on this I have grain sealer on it um, you can see it, and I got some trim uh, that's not inlay it's it's a decal but when you get it uh, if you get it under your varnish, it it really blends in and looks very much like inlay. And in fact, a lot of people have thought that it was. Uh, I'm too lazy to do inlay. Well, I, I could. I've done bindings like this before. Um, I had mixed feelings about running a router in the tiger wood to put binding in because it doesn't always route that well. So I opted for this. And I've got the back on. It's only held on right now by two screws. Um, the the plan at this point. So you can see I've shaped everything, and I've I do have frets in, and they're taped uh, because I I kind of wanted to do my fret job before I finished my sanding and all the work, and uh, so I I did it that way. I don't recommend that you do it that way. I chose to. I, I'm quite happy with that. But uh, you'll see I did go with the red mahogany stain on the veneer. I think it goes well with the tiger wood. Um, and I, I'm happy with that choice. And uh, what I have left to do, I have a lot of things left to do. I have to drill a hole here to put the chanterelle tuner in. I have to drill holes in the headstock to put the four tuners in. Um, I will at some point mount the tailpiece. My plan for that though is to get the nut made and um, have strings lined up so I get the tailpiece in the perfect position. And so that's part of why it's not on yet. And the real focus of my time uh, th that's coming is I'm going to need to sand this uh, flush. It's pretty close, but I want to sand it smooth and flush to uh, the sides and smooth and flush here. And uh, actually, before I do that, it's only held on by two screws. I'm going to put the screw pattern in all the way around and I have it fastened on while I work on it. And that way, if I hit this and I take off some grain sealer or scar scratch the grain sealer it, on, on the, this part, it won't matter because I'll, I'll re-finish it. I'm going to put lacquer on it uh, ultimately. But... This needs a lot of work. I'll have to sand all of this smooth. I'll have to work around the Celtic cross and file and, and sand in all the nitty gritty places and try to make it uh, the way I want it to be. And we'll see how that goes. Sure hope it works. Uh, a lot of work going into this. However, here's what I do know. If for some reason the skin doesn't stay in or, or something like that, I could easily put a wooden top on this uh, I, I actually, I'll just hold on a minute. I actually have enough of this fence board that I used on the plectrum guitar. See the wormholes? That's a real pretty look on the front of an instrument. And I could put that on there if for some reason it doesn't hold the skin like I want it to. And I'm confident it will. And the reason I actually have saved those boards is I have another neck uh, that I made uh, and I'm changing it up uh, to become a three string with a chanterelle. So it'll have four strings. 
and um, a triangle body so it'll I'll call it a banjo like so it'll look like a balalaika and play a little like a banjo it'll be a fun project and we'll see what happens with that <clears throat> so that's where I'm at I might mention to you I don't just labor and labor and labor over this you're seeing a video once a week um, I'm a busy enough guy so it's a hobby and like most hobbies you just squeeze it into life and and so there are days I don't work on it I don't look at it I don't do anything with it there are other days that <clears throat> I get to spend a little more time a lot of times I get home from the office late and uh, I might spend 10 or 15 minutes tinkering on something and then go shower and go to bed um, it, it's just here and there and sometimes I wake up in the wee hours of the morning at oh dark 30 and do stuff so it's kind of just like that it's supposed to be fun it's not a big project uh, and and my advice to anyone that decides to do any kind of build is make it fun take your time and relax so we'll see you next time the lord bless you guys so time to do something with my natural banjo skin natural hide so this is these are like between nine and ten dollars amazon it's a thin goat skin that's been bleached and as I've been working on the banjo build and talking about uh, making it, giving it some darker tones, I'm going to experiment with staining. I've already experimented on the back side along the edge here. I did a little Old English and I did a little of the natural, the red mahogany. I think I've decided to go with the red mahogany. It'll give it a dark tone. I'm going to stain the rough side first and then um, flip it over and stain the smooth side and the smooth side is the side that goes out towards the strings as a general rule you there's you know I've seen guys put the rough side out because they want a little more texture or something um, I may even do that I have no idea but uh, isn't it nice to know I don't know what I'm doing I'm just guessing as I go so um, I I've read up on it watched some videos and when I was done, it was as clear as mud. So I've decided to go for it. Now I'm wearing rubber gloves because here's how you figure out if a stain will work on goat skin. If it will stain your hide, it will stain a banjo hide. There you go. So if you could, if it stains your fingers, it'll stain this. If it works on your hide, it'll work on the goat's hide. So my big scholarly solution is to just start rubbing it on here and then uh, after I rub it on here I'm gonna rub it off and you're seeing it here I've never done this before we're just going for it and uh, it might turn out to be ugly it might not it's gonna end up on the banjo and uh, if I absolutely hate it um, then I can always put a new one on. Uh, you're not really risking that much when you talk about a $10 goat skin. So I've rubbed it on and we're rubbing it off. And uh, aren't I doing a great job here? So <clears throat> I think I'm liking it. Honestly, I think with the tiger wood and everything, that's the back side. Uh, this is the front side. I'm going to rub a little on the front too. And the idea is I'm going to leave this overnight because to install it, I have to soak it in water for 20 minutes, warm water. So I want the stain to dry in there and, and, and thoroughly soak in because I, I expect I could possibly lose some of the colorization. Um, well, I like the smooth side and uh, I could lose some of it as I soak it and so on and so forth. So I don't know, but here's, here we are staying in a banjo hide for the very first time. And you can see it's super complicated. I'm dipping a paper towel in a red mahogany penetrating stain made by Minwax and I'm rubbing it all over the skin. 
And now that it's rubbed all over the skin, I'm rubbing it off with a clean paper towel like that. I'm very happy, I think, with this outcome. If it, if it stays like this or even gets a little lighter, it won't matter. I'm going to like it on the banjo. I'm really look, now hoping it holds. Uh, I don't know I, that I gave myself enough tack room in this new banjo build in terms of the gluing and tacking inside the framework for the skin. But there it is, all stained. Um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of streaky and it's different colors in different spots and it's darker. And um, I think that's going to be just a really fun look when I get it on the banjo and strings and all of that. And um, <clears throat> I haven't even looked at the set of Aquila strings I've ordered that came. Um, but I can tell you on the <clears throat> on the other set that is on the mountain banjo, I use a medium. I just like a little more tone and power in them. I use a medium, and the D string on the medium is brown instead of white. The other strings are white. So there's a fun thing. It goes with everything else we're doing. So there it is. I'm just going to leave it laying here on this cardboard. And... Uh, you know, in a couple days, we'll be putting that on. So, thank you for showing interest. And that's how to stain a banjo skin from my perspective. And honestly, I don't see any reason to make it harder than that. I think that uh, that was easy. And I think it's going to look really cool on there. Thanks. So... That was the banjo building process, and this is the finished banjo. Uh, you can see that the cushion is there uh, to absorb some of the sound that it makes. It's actually pretty efficient, has a lot of volume and power, and it plays quite well. And there's the headstock and everything. I'm quite happy with it. it sounds like this. That's it. And if you're interested, uh, the clear coat that I actually use on most of my instruments, I've altered it some, but I keep coming back to it. It's simple. It's uh, it's just spray lacquer uh, in, a, in a rattle can. It's a deft gloss spray lacquer is what I tend to use unless I'm doing a satin finish, then it's deft satin lacquer. And then um, when I seal the grain, I've been using a spray shellac. Uh, aerosol shellac, which is a come natural thing from the lac bugs in India of all things. And I use that as a grain sealer, usually a couple coats of that. Then I, you know, I sand it between each coat. Then I start putting the lacquer on and that gets rid of some of the raised grains, etc. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and uh, we'll be on to some other project soon. I've already thought of one, I just have to get working on it. Lord bless you.